All right, check this out. One, two, three, and four. That never gets old. All right, let's talk about Dishonored. In this stealth action title from 2012, you play as Corvo Atano, former Lord Protector to the Empress after she is assassinated in a conspiracy led by her royal spymaster, who becomes Lord Regent after framing you for her murder. Specifically, we're looking at the mission Lady Boyle's Last Party, in which you eliminate the Lord Regent's mistress at a masquerade party held at her estate. The twist, as you learn before you leave the hub area, is that she's one of three Boyle sisters and you don't know which one is your target before you arrive. As usual, I recommend playing Dishonored at least through this mission before you watch, but I won't be spoiling the non-lethal way to get rid of her for folks who haven't played it since figuring it out is half the fun. Before you even start the mission, you have to interrogate the scientist and artist Anton Sokolov to try to get the target's identity, having kidnapped him in the previous mission. You're given the option to either intimidate or bribe him, capitalizing on his fear of plague rats or love for a certain rare liquor, respectively. This foreshadows an important exchange that can occur later in the mission, so take note of it now because we're going to refer back to it later. The mission proper opens with the usual drop-off by boat and takes the opportunity to introduce what may be the game's most iconic enemy, the tall boy, and this moment is a perfect example of how to introduce a powerful enemy. Sam the Boatman speaks cautiously about it, and you're able to clearly see just how dangerous it is while it massacres the weepers on and near the bridge. Because the game makes very clear what the tall boy is capable of, you're incentivized to avoid it, and if you fight him head-on, you really have no one to blame but yourself, if and likely when he straight up wrecks you. The fireworks and bright lights of the party inform you where you need to go, while the threat of the tall boy encourages you to spend some time exploring the surrounding area. The dilapidated buildings full of weepers establish a sharp contrast to the extravagant party at the Boyle Estate and contain runes and bone charms that you can use to buy new abilities and enhance yourself with passive effects. Now let's talk about the party itself, because it is a dense little ball of excellent game design. Once you're inside, you can move around freely and interact with the guests without being detected since You already have a mask. Don't you, Corvo? This totally redefines stealth in Dishonored. While you normally have to avoid being seen at all by sticking to cover in rooftops, you're now free to walk around through the party and interact with the guests who don't know your real identity. In theater, the term for a moment in which the audience knows something that the characters on stage do not is called dramatic irony, and I think it fits for stealth games as well, where so much of the inherent satisfaction comes from sneaking past your enemies knowing that they have no idea that you're there. At the Boyle party, however, this feeling comes from knowing that they can see you but don't realize who you are, and Arcane Studios, the game's developer, emphasizes and capitalizes on this throughout the party. The guests will frequently make references to your mask. It's exactly like the wanted posters. And if you use the invitation you can steal two missions prior, you're told, you Just had someone here pretending to be you. If you look outside the main gate, you can see that it's actually the invitation's original owner himself. These small moments enhance the satisfaction that comes from hiding in plain sight and make even simply moving through the party exciting. These moments are great on their own, but they're also indicative of a central theme not just of this mission, but of the entire game. The events in Dishonored are set in motion by a case of mistaken identity, Corvo standing falsely accused for the Empress's assassination, and the meaning of identity is a constant presence throughout the game. You're given free reign to be as lethal or non-lethal as you want, which affects the game's chaos rating. The more you kill, the more corpses there are for the plague rats to devour, allowing them to thrive and worsening the plague that's tearing through the city. More importantly, your actions also affect how other characters judge you, so your choices not only affect your gameplay experience, but also shape your identity in the city of Dunwall. At the party, the theme of identity takes on a much more literal role in the mission's objective. Just as the party changes the definition of stealth, so too does the objective change in response. Instead of stalking a known target from the start, you can use the newfound freedom that the party grants you in order to find and isolate the correct Lady Boyle before taking her out. This gives you a meaningful reason to interact with the partygoers, since you can frequently hear them talking about the Boyle guessing game. They say that anyone able to guess the identities of all three sisters will get a valuable prize, the Boyle cameo. Additionally, you can interact with some of the guests to narrow down which sister is which, though you can also explore the estate to find her identity by different means if you want. So we have these two core ideas, identity and choice, which are inherently linked, and I'd argue that they are more explicitly connected in this mission than anywhere else in the game. Let's consider the most central choice in the level, how to get rid of Lady Boyle. On one hand, we have the lethal option, which, at the risk of being too obvious, is a pretty antisocial choice. You know, murder. On the other hand, to choose to spare Lady Boyle's life shows mercy even in the face of the terrible wrong she helped to cause. And before you argue how disturbing the non-lethal solution is, keep in mind that it's not clear just how sinister it is until its conclusion, so it's not immediately evident. 
but yeah, it's really dark. Without going into spoiler territory, I can tell you that the non-lethal path at a base level requires a greater level of social interaction than the murder route. Do you remember the Sokolov interrogation before the mission? Once again here, depending on which boil the game assigns as the target, and she's randomly chosen each time, you'll need to speak with her and prey on her desires or fears in order to isolate her and safely get rid of her. Therefore, more social interaction is required for the path that results in the sparing of a life, which is literally pro-social behavior. On the opposite end of the spectrum is the lethal option, which, at its most extreme, can play out by you just killing all three ladies' boils, succeeding by process of elimination without speaking to a single person at all. This again is antisocial behavior, to put it bluntly. Very bluntly. Thus we have a non-lethal and therefore more pro-social result that requires matching social behavior and a lethal outcome that doesn't require any sociable behavior at all. Oh, and if you choose to go all American Psycho and schmooze the party guests into giving you the info you need before killing Lady Boyle in cold blood, well, you'll be fittingly perceived as a monster. In every case, as each path unfolds, your actions throughout are consistent with the motive and goal behind them, not in spite of, but entirely due to the unique structure of the mission. How awesome is that, right? Finally, let's look back at all that makes up this level. We have a masquerade party full of nobles, all sealed away and protected from a nearby plague-ravaged populace, infiltrated by an unknown masked intruder bringing doom. Additionally, note that the plague is characterized by blood weeping from the eyes, at which point there is no saving the infected victim. This entire scenario, even down to the differently colored bedroom of each Boyle sister, is one big awesome reference to Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Mask of the Red Death. In this tale, Prince Prospero seals himself and a thousand nobles in his abbey while a plague named the Red Death decimates his country, killing its victims within half an hour of infection while they bleed from their pores. During a lavish masquerade party, an unknown individual appears in the guise of a plague victim, much to the dismay of the partygoers. It is soon discovered, however, that the costume is empty and the mysterious figure was the Red Death itself. One by one, the nobles who so arrogantly ignored their suffering populace fall to the plague and none are left alive. Sounds a little familiar, right? The greatest detail is the reversal of perspective. Instead of being the story of Prince Prospero, who is paralleled here by the Boyles, you play through the eyes of the masked intruder himself. By placing Corvo side by side with the embodiment of the Red Death, Arcane creates a sinister comparison that amplifies the malevolence of the assassination of Lady Boyle, or helps to convey how horrifying the non-lethal solution is, because unlike any other in the game, it's not made entirely clear. You're given just enough information to know that it's horrible without knowing the specifics, which forces your imagination to fill in the terrifying gaps. You can even see a parallel for Prince Prospero's outrage in Poe's story if you sign the guest book at the party. In a note you can find in the following mission, you find a description of a distasteful prank by some unknown partygoer claiming to be Corvo Atano. This, by the way, is yet another example of Arcane emphasizing the fun that comes from hiding in plain sight. So there you have it. Lady Boyle's Last Party is a level that features smart mechanics, excellent visual design, and the whole thing is a clever reference to an awesome story. You'll find a link to The Mask of the Red Death in the description, and I highly recommend reading it since I feel that it adds an interesting layer to this level. Ultimately, however, it's the wealth of choices that keeps me coming back to this level and to Dishonored. No matter which way you choose to play it, this is not a party you'll forget anytime soon. Thank you for watching. I'd love for you to share your thoughts below in the comments, and I hope you'll join me again next time for another great level in gaming.